It's been quite a journey so far. As you might know, I'm on a mission to find the best solution to extend the Wi-Fi range. Now, in the previous videos, I tried increasing the power, which didn't work. Then I tried replacing the antennas, which was better, but it still didn't solve my problem. And finally, I used a repeater, I mean a range extender. So as the name suggests, it is supposed to extend the range, right? It kind of did, but it wasn't perfect. That's why in this video, I'm not only going to try one method, but rather two methods. Mm. I have a feeling that finally I'm going to find my answer today. So stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to compare a Wi-Fi mesh system with a Wi-Fi system that uses multiple access points. The purpose of both is to create seamless and robust wireless network coverage across a large area, such as a home or office space. This is something that a single wireless router or access point setup cannot provide, as its signal strength diminishes with distance and obstacles. However, these systems utilize multiple Wi-Fi nodes spread throughout the premises to relay data data ensuring consistent connectivity. So as you can see, the goal of these two systems is similar. However, the primary difference between them lies in their architecture and how they handle network management. In a traditional setup with multiple access points, the backhaul connection of each node is wired, and each access point operates independently, requiring manual configuration for seamless roaming and coverage optimization. In contrast, a Wi-Fi mesh system's backhaul connection can be either wireless or wired, depending on the system setup and capabilities. It also creates a unified network where each node communicates with each other dynamically, forming a self-configuring network. Mesh systems employ intelligent routing algorithms to optimize data transmission paths, automatically adjusting to changes in network conditions and client locations. So in terms of setup, the mesh Wi-Fi should be easier because it requires only basic configuration. For example, I simply name the Wi-Fi and set the password on the primary node then add one or more mesh nodes either wired or wireless the system automatically configures the same wi-fi settings on the rest of the nodes and optimizes the network for optimal performance i don't need to do anything else However, in this setup, I have to do most of the things manually for each access point. For example, I need to set up Wi-Fi names and passwords for each access point, choose Wi-Fi channels for each, and so on and so forth. Even with centralized or cloud management for the access points, each can act independently. This means I can assign different Wi-Fi names and passwords to each and set each of them to broadcast on a different Wi-Fi channel. So you might think that this is just too complicated and it's a no-brainer the mesh system that does everything intelligently is the best solution. I mean it could be but not necessarily. To better explain, I'm going to use an analogy that I've used before. To me, a mesh system feels like a car with an automatic gearbox. So I, as the driver, don't really care how the gear change happens. All I do is put it in drive when I want to drive, and the car does the rest for me. The same goes for the Wi-Fi. I don't care that much how the Wi-Fi is broadcasting on each node. When I want to use the Wi-Fi, I just connect to the Wi-Fi and the system does the rest for me. On the other hand, this is like a car with a manual gearbox. Here I as the driver am responsible for changing the gears, knowing when to change the gears, and also choosing the right gears based on the condition of the road, the required speed, whether I'm going uphill, downhill, or on a highway, and so on and so forth. There's also another pedal called the clutch which makes things even more complicated. Similarly with Wi-Fi, here depending on many factors such as the environment, the number of clients, the type of clients, and the overall network design, I must manually set up the Wi-Fi to accommodate these. So essentially here only if I really know what I'm doing, I can set up a very good Wi-Fi network, otherwise I can't.
Now, let me ask you a question. Let's say someone is trying to get the best performance out of their car. Let's say that person is a race car driver. Now, which one do you think he or she would prefer? Most likely the manual gearbox. Although it is harder to drive, a race car driver knows what he or she is doing. So they can get an awesome performance. But if the person is using a car to commute back and forth to work during rush hour in heavy traffic, which one would that person prefer? Most likely the automatic one, because it's easier. The purpose is not necessarily performance, but rather convenience. The same goes here. Setting up a mesh system is much simpler and more convenient. So I don't necessarily need to be tech savvy to be able to do that. I just need to know and implement the basics of computer networking and it should work fine. But here I need to have a higher understanding of Wi-Fi networks and how they work in order to be able to set it up correctly. Now another thing worth mentioning is that although the mesh system intelligently makes a lot of decisions, it looks like sometimes it doesn't necessarily make the best decisions. For example, one of the advantages of using a wired backhaul is that I can set up Wi-Fi networks that are using non-overlapping channels so they won't interfere with each other. Something I talked about in the previous video and in other videos. But I've seen mesh systems that even when the backhaul is wired, the nodes broadcast on the same channel as the primary node, which causes interference and is not good. So it seems that here I might be sacrificing some network quality for convenience, which depending on how you look at it, could be a big deal or not. It is a big deal for me because I'm the kind of person who prefers to have more manual control over the network and would also be happy to take advantage of all the quality and power that my network gear can provide. This way I don't have to upgrade the Wi-Fi system as often and I have a more future-proof system. I mean, I know Wi-Fi systems with access points that have been in place for maybe close to 10 years and even though it's a Wi-Fi 5 system it is still capable of providing a good enough network that they don't feel the need to upgrade it yet. But let's not forget, the network was initially designed and set up correctly. I mean, the correct number of access points were used. Not too many, not too few. And also access points were installed in the right places, broadcasting using non-overlapping channels, and so on and so forth. They also took advantage of using an access point with a semi-directional antenna for a hallway. And they have great coverage there, something that would not have been possible using an omnidirectional antenna. Another reason why this could last longer is because here we have a distributed network where each device is focusing on more or less one task. We have a dedicated router for our routing jobs, a dedicated switch for our switching jobs, and dedicated access points for taking care of the wireless jobs. So essentially each device using all its power and resources for doing one thing. And this way the network devices are less likely to be overwhelmed. Also if I need to, for example, upgrade or replace the router I just replace the router with a newer model and I don't have to replace the rest of the devices or if I need to maybe increase the Wi-Fi capacity of my network I can simply add another access point and don't need to touch the rest of the network whereas here that's not always possible because of compatibility issues upgrading one node might require upgrading the whole system now that being said and even though that is definitely my choice, I understand that this approach is not for everyone. Not everyone wants to dive deep into network management or cares about squeezing every bit of performance out of their Wi-Fi. For many, the convenience and ease of setup that a mesh system offers far outweigh the benefits of a more hands-on but potentially more optimized access point based system. There's nothing wrong with it, especially if you don't have a very busy Wi-Fi network. So to summarize the entire series, in my opinion, the best way to extend Wi-Fi effectively is by using multiple access points as the backbone of the wireless network. Then I can enhance this setup with techniques we discussed in the previous videos. For example, a patch antenna could be useful to cover a hallway. Or adjusting the transmit power of an access point may help to achieve desired Wi-Fi capacity. If wiring is not practical, for example, in that corner of the 
the building using a repeater or a mesh node might come in handy. This wireless setup can last a long time before I need to upgrade it. It is also easily scalable should I need to extend the coverage even further. Thank you very much for watching this video. This wraps up my search for finding the best method to extend the Wi-Fi range. I hope you liked it and learned something. If you did, please like the video and also subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos. Thank you again and I will see you next time. Thank you.